Hello and welcome to the Introduction to Solar PV Design, Installation, and Code course here on HeatSpring.com. So just a little bit about myself. My name is Optimus Prime. My name is Sean White. I've been teaching solar classes full time for quite a while. I have a lot of books out there. I have a podcast, which you can look up on my website, solarshawn.com, or you can just do a search in your favorite podcast app for Sean White's Solar and Energy Storage Podcast. Other things that you can see that we have going on here are all of these different NABCEP logos. We're gonna talk about that in this little intro to the intro video. NABCEP, of course, stands for the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners, and NABCEP does more solar certifications than any other organization in the universe. One more thing is I'm an Interstate Renewable Energy Council, also known as IREC, Certified Master Trainer, as I was the 2014 IREC Trainer of the Year. So let's talk a little bit more about NABCEP here because I am known for preparing people for NABCEP exams. In fact, I used to work for that exam prep organization called Kaplan, and back then I was their NABCEP exam prep instructor. I taught a lot of live and online classes for them, and they are kind of famous for doing exam prep for all different kinds of exams. And they went out of the solar training business and I just kept carrying that torch of NABCEP exam prep. In fact, I was doing it before I worked for Kaplan too. So let's check out these pathways. What we can see right smack in the middle is the PV associate credential. What that means is that for all the different pathways for anybody working in the solar industry, they should take the PV associate exam. And I believe that that even goes for people that are answering phones, secretaries, chief executive officers, anyone in the industry should at least have this basic knowledge. It makes them twice as valuable and it is not that much of an effort. There's many people out there that studied for the associate exam for a week and passed the exam and it gives you lots of credibility in the industry. So now what we're doing is we're looking at these different PV, that stands for photovoltaic certifications that are surrounding the associate credential here. So what I'm going to start with is the PV installation professional certification, also known as the PVIP. Yes, that's right. We like to use abbreviations in this industry. When I first took this exam, it was called the PV installer exam. In fact, I used to be on the committee that wrote the NAPSEP questions for this exam. This is the best one. This is the gold standard certification. And this is a great thing to get for any job in the industry, if you ask me. Then there's the PV Design Specialist Certification, which is very similar in the difficulty to the PV Installation Professional Certification. In fact, there's many designers out there that just go for the PVIP instead of the PV Design Specialist, that's PVDS Certification. Let's just go to the red top here. We have the PV Installer Specialist Certification. This is designed for people that are out there installing solar systems up on roofs, project managers, things like that. Then over here, we have the PV CMS, that's PV Commissioning and Maintenance Specialist Certification, which is getting a little bit more popular right now. Then going further counterclockwise, we have the PVTS, that's the PV Technical Sales Certification. And this is a great thing to have for solar salespeople. In fact, I tell people all the time to only buy solar systems from people with NABCEP certifications. There's way too many people out there getting in trouble for doing bad sales techniques. So I just send them to the NABCEP website. Then green on the bottom is the PV System Inspector Certification. That's the PVSI. And that certification is designed for inspectors. So which certification do you want? Hey, maybe you could be like me and go for them all. Get a whole alphabet full of letters after your name. Sweet. So here I am again. And like I said before, a lot of people know me for training for NABCEP classes and I've won a few different awards besides the IREC Trainer of the Year Award in 2014. In 2011, I got the Mike Holt Award for teaching, and actually that's a picture of me teaching a class for Mike Holt. He's kind of famous for training electricians. And in 2020, I got the Trainer of the Decade Award from SNEC. That's the world's largest solar conference. 
that takes place in Shanghai, where they have hundreds of thousands of people show up. And I also had a few other awards from SNEC. One of the things that I'm working on is a how to study class. I found out that there's a lot of people that have trouble studying. This is a book that I read when I was a freshman in college, and it helped a lot. I think that every college should start their students off with a how to study class. So just some great ways to study. One thing is to study things over and over again. Don't expect that you're just gonna read something once and remember it for the rest of your life. And one of the things that I like to do is to have fun in life. And when you're having fun in life, it makes it more memorable. And so have a positive attitude, make fun analogies, and you will do much better at taking tests. Another thing too, that I find very helpful is to find good practice exams. You wanna know what the test is gonna look like. And of course, we can't copy the test, but we can make a test that has the same type of format, you know, A, B, C, and D answers like NABCEP does, and cover the same material that you could expect to see on the test. Another thing that I see a lot of people making mistakes with is not taking the time to study. So even if you already have all of these certifications, I still recommend studying and study on a regular basis. There is nobody that studies more than I do. Making all this material is studying. And then another thing for life is to get a lot of rest. Don't be tired. Just ask LeBron James. That guy is religious about getting plenty of sleep and nobody does better by staying up all night studying. One of the things about taking a test is you have to know how to do an educated guess, and you just can't make an educated guess when you're tired. And then there's recordings. So listening to relevant podcasts, recordings like my recordings on heat spring classes. In fact, when I was in college, I would pull out that old tape recorder and just start reading my notes into it, and then I would listen to it all the time. And I just want to reiterate that having good practice exams is golden. And also, having some good books is platinum. So far, I have published nine books, including second and third editions. The book that people mostly start with is called Solar Photovoltaic Basics, a study guide for the NABCEP associate exam. And then there's Solar PV Engineering and Installation, Preparation for the NABSET PV Installation Professional, Specialist, and Inspector Certification Exams. Then there is PV and the NEC. The NEC, of course, is the National Electrical Code. That's all the rules. And I wrote that book with a good friend of mine named Bill Brooks, who is a solar legend. And if you open the National Electrical Code, you'll find Bill's name in there since he's on Code Panel 4. And Bill is pretty much the main guy behind putting new stuff into newer versions of the National Electrical Code as it relates to solar. Then another book that I wrote is called PV Technical Sales, Preparation for the NABCEP Technical Sales Certification. And just like the book says, people use that book to prepare for the NABCEP PV Technical Sales exam. And last but not least is Energy Storage Basics, and I wrote that book with my good friend, Saad Yousefi. With all the solar energy going on the grid because of our success in the last 15 years, we have so much solar energy that we need to store inside of energy storage systems. So the best place to get these books is over on Amazon. Pretty easy to find. You can also find links at solarshawn.com. So I don't just teach classes on the internet. I am actually a real person. One of the things that's been on my bucket list for many years is to teach a class at a place called Mazdar. They have a renewable energy city in the United Arab Emirates. And just about an hour away from Mazdar, there is a huge photovoltaic system. And right here it says 800 megawatts, but that's 800 megawatts of inverters. And actually there's over a thousand megawatts of solar modules there. And a thousand megawatts, that's a thousand million, that's a billion, that's a gigawatt, and that is very big. One thing that makes this industry so exciting is all of the government money that is used to incentivize people to go solar. 
And if you're from the fossil fuel industry, don't think that solar is the only industry getting incentives. The fossil fuel industry gets a whole lot more. But let's just talk about these renewable energy incentives. So we've got a 30% investment tax credit. We've got a $4,000 rebate for updating breaker boxes. And we have a 30% tax credit for energy storage systems. Then there are all of these electric vehicle tax credits. I wonder if I could get this $4,000 used electric vehicle tax credit by selling myself my car. That would be cool. So how do you learn about all the details about these tax credits? Understanding this stuff is complicated, especially if you want to know the details. But here are just some different places where you can learn about these things. And I'll talk about them throughout my classes. But of course, this is an intro class and we need to get moving because your time is valuable. It is interesting that if we do everything in the most incentivized way, that we can actually get a tax credit as high as 70%. And domestic content means pretty much made in America. Energy communities means perhaps installed where there was an old coal plant. And maybe you would be working with these low and medium income projects like those laid off coal plant workers or just anybody that's not making a whole ton of money because there are so many renewable energy jobs out there. Here's an example. We have a Kentucky coal mine that is turning into a renewable energy project. I mean, wouldn't you rather have solar on your roof? Imagine these basketball players' lungs after getting to work out here. So up your game, start off getting your NABSET PVA, that's the PV associate. Then when you go for the PV installation professional exam, you might even see a question that I wrote there because I was on the committee that helped write the JTA, that means job task analysis, with all of these other famous people here, such as Ward Bauer, really cool guy. He endorsed our PV in the NEC book, but most of all, what makes him super special is Ward invented the grid tie inverter in 1977. Wow. I always like to give a shout out to Grid Alternatives, my favorite nonprofit. I've taught a lot of classes for them too, and they are pretty much the habitat for humanity for solar. They have about 10 offices throughout the country, and if you're lucky enough to live near one or you want to take a trip, they even do installations in different countries. Great way to get experience. Check them out, gridalternatives.org. Now I'm just going to show you how my classes are so fun. They're unforgettable, and that's the way to study. Now here we have one of my favorite actors, Sean Connery, teaching this guy about ground fault circuit interruption. So if that guy had a house that had ground fault circuit interruption, he wouldn't have been so shocked. And here we've got another James Bond teaching us about fall protection. So every time you're greater than six feet high, you want to have fall protection. So I don't recommend jumping out of an airplane without a parachute, unless of course, there's a bad guy in front of you with a parachute that you're going to take. And here we are at LinkedIn. Make sure to find me on LinkedIn. It's the resume of the new age. Real easy to find me, Sean White or Sean White Solar. Probably there's a good chance we're already connected, but look at this video I found over there. Wow, that's because of this right here. You see my mouse. And so we don't have a drip loop and the water is running down these cables and filling up the DC disconnect for this inverter. Obviously that's a no-no. And in the beginning, there was code. And now a tiny bit about the code. This is something that you would find in Article 705, Section 705.12 of the National Electrical Code. I don't want to overwhelm you from the beginning, but if you want to do a simple installation, let's just say here's your main breaker. This is called the bus bar. It's where you connect your breakers. And if my bus bar was rated at 100 amps, all I have to do is go 100 times 1.2 is 120. 
and let's say that the main breaker was also rated for 100 amps. So I could take that 120 amps, subtract 100, and I would get 20 left over for the largest solar backfeed breaker that I could put on this bus bar as long as I put it at the opposite end of the bus bar. So that, my friends, is called the 120% rule. And if you haven't heard of it yet, now you have. Try using the term 120% rule at the next solar PV cocktail party that you go to. Now, I really think building integrated photovoltaics is pretty, but it still might not be a pretty good investment. That's because you might be paying triple for your electricity, but it sure looks neat. This is a picture of a PV system in Germany where they have extra incentives for building integrated photovoltaics. And here I am next to the biggest BIPV array in the world in 2009, over there not too far from Shanghai, and it's still the biggest BIPV array in the world. Here it is from the outside. That was a neat experience, but I still don't think that this PV array paid for itself yet. But once again, sure looks neat. So there's another thing called agrivoltaics, and that's using agriculture with photovoltaics. I don't recommend using goats because they like to jump on things. However, they are kind of fun. I like to use sheep because they're very sheepish. And how many of you out there have those Roomba vacuum cleaners? We have similar devices that clean off solar farms in dusty desert regions. It's pretty amazing. They even have some robots that will take the robot off of an array and then bring it to a neighboring array. That's a robot helping a robot. Now I'm not saying to get a tattoo, but there's lots of people that are super dedicated. And if somebody is gonna get a tattoo anyway, it might as well have electrical diagrams on it. This is a picture of the PV array on top of Alcatraz. That's right, the famous prison where Al Capone used to live. But you don't wanna get in trouble like Al Capone, so make sure that you do things ethically. It's interesting that the California Contractors State License Board has a most wanted list. So these are people that are doing unethical solar sales and other things, of course. You don't wanna be on this list. And I was just joking, these guys probably weren't doing solar sales, but could have been. And I know that there are some solar sales people out there that are making us all look bad. And what they need to do is get NABCEP certified. Then you can be ethical and make money at the same time by using your brain. You wanna make sure that you get on this list. That would be the board certified directory or the associate directory. And then when people ask me who they should use to install a solar system, I will send them to you via the NABSEP directory. So I hope you enjoyed this intro to the intro and on with the show.